Welcome back to Blaze Blue. We're gonna continue Tiger. I'm assuming we're gonna we're gonna fight Light Chief in this part. Just in case you guys forgot. Or um, I don't or I I for, I'm not sure if I read that or not. The last part or not. Wow, I fucked up that opening again. The scene is changed again. I guess this must be Orient Town. Feels so healthy and happy. So, this is Orient Town. It's got such energy and a thick lived in feel to it. This place isn't bad at all. Alright, I guess I'll go find the setup coordinates. As I scan the area, a woman catches my eye. A comp the computer piggybacking on my brain recognizes her immediately. It's Lychee. She was Kokona's assistant before she ran away from Sector 7. T Tiger! You didn't come here to bring me back, did you? That's right. Perhaps I should take her back. I should call Kokone. Hmm? The signal's giving out. I guess I'll have to call the shots. If we wanted to bring you back, we could have done so. You should thank Kokonoe. She's the reason no one pursued you after you decided to go AWOL. So you're telling me to go back on my own. Is that it? Right. If you've realized how selfish you've been, then return to the sector. Kokonoi will save you from being court-martialed. Ugh. I refuse. I can't go back right now. I haven't found him yet. Is that so? Still, I will have to report to Kokonoi that I found you here. That's my mission. I understand that you have your mission, but I can't let you do that now. You were the last person I wanted to cross fists with. But very well. Whenever you're ready. The wheel of fate is turning. Rebel, one, action! You might get my own. So much power! Hey! Attack! Wait! I dare you! Power! I... I can't go back yet. I'm sorry, Lychee. Shame on you, son. It ain't right to hit a lady like that. This power... You are... Jubei. You know who I am, son. Now back off, unless you think you're a match for me. Jubei. The strongest living creature in the world. One of the legendary six heroes. The rumors say he could take on an entire army division by himself. I appreciate the opportunity, but I'm gonna have to pass. <gasps> lychee has gone and fainted. Poor girl couldn't take the stress. I didn't think anyone could stop my fists. Not even one of the six heroes. Well, you were full of it. No anger behind those fists. Ain't hard to stop a fellow what don't want to hurt you. But I can't abide you laying a hand on the lady here. I didn't mean to hurt her. I just needed to know how determined she was. Determined, huh? Jibai stares at me with the a piercing eyes of a cat. His stare reminds me of Koganoe. He I don't think Tiger realizes that he is that Jibai is a cat. I reckon you're telling the truth. You leave her to me, son, and get yourself wherever it is you need to go. If she comes to while you're here, things are bound to get messy. Thanks. I owe you one. So I tell Cook and no, I, I encountered Jubai? No, I asked her about him once. She was in, in a bad mood for a week. Maybe I should keep this to myself. His eyes, though, they're so similar. <laughs> That's absurd. I shouldn't dig too deep. Besides, it's not a very good idea to put Kokono in a bad mood. In retrospect, it's a bad... It's a bad idea to get any one in a bad mood. 
The only one, there's only one more unit left to be set up. Unfortunately, it looks like I've saved the most difficult one for last. Kokonoi is asking too much this time, but it is my job after all. She says I have to set up inside the library branch in Kagasuchi. What the hell's going on? Is there not a single guard on duty? This place is too quiet. It's kind of creeping me out. Is this a trap, or have they already found me? <clears throat> I feel cold, vicious eyes on my back. I turn around and recognize the man standing before me. One of the library's most decorated heroes. <sighs> Not a single guard in the entire branch. Is this your doing, Red Devil? No. It was like this when I arrived. A most plausible lie. And you want me to believe that? Don't you think that's a little too convenient? I believe that it was nobody's doing. Naturally. I wouldn't expect the murderer who needlessly slaughtered Akaroga's guardian to hear me out. Guardian? Who's that? He doesn't remember. I suppose he has no interest in someone he's already killed. I wonder if he feels any guilt at all for all the people he's killed. You're too dangerous for your own good. I'm gonna need to take you down. Take me down? Huh. <laughs> Funny. Then what are you waiting for? The wheel of fate is turning. And then immediately Rebel, one, action! I dare you! You done? this? You done? Devil, my ass! You done? Truly, a hero. Devil. This is the result of your own conceit. I guess you're just a rookie after all. I lead Jin and head deeper into the facility to finish setting up the last of the equipment. I use the crane in the back of the room to lower myself down into the bottom level of this facility. I guess the basic construction here is very similar to the sector. I take a quick look around and, satisfied that the area is safe, I begin settling, setting up the equipment in the spot Kokona a designated. You. Why have you come here? So he's here, just like Kokona said he would be. Although I can't the help but thinking about why she knew he'd be here. No, that's not important. I need to focus on my work right now. You should already know. I came here to retrieve you, Hakuman. Retrieve? I do not recall making such a request. From the moment you were rescued from the Boundary, Kokonoa has been your master. And we can't exactly allow a domesticated hound to roam free, now can we? Hmm. An interesting thing to say. You're telling the dog who happened to be found that day to listen to the cat? Indeed, it was a coincidence. Sector 7 aims to kill the Seether at its source. You were just a byproduct Kokonoe found along the line. Coincidence or not, that's irrelevant to her. She only sees you as another sample, a tool to research the original units that lie dormant within the boundary. Your purpose is of no interest to me. I exist only to eradicate evil from this earth. I am not bound by the whim of that Grimalkin. You and Sector 7 wish to dispose of Seether and return the world to how it once was. Ask yourself, is what you desire truly just? 
That can be said about a lot of things in the world right now. What do you mean, just? Think, fool. The world of today thrives on Seether. Were it to disappear, would that world not end? Perhaps your actions will hurt the world rather than save it. Losing Seether could bring humanity to its knees in a way the Black Beast could never have managed. How can you know this and still believe in Sector 7? Huckerman goes silent. He seems to be waiting for my answer. What I have faith in isn't Sector 7. It's Kokonoe. Since that day, and from now on, that won't change. <laughs> so you have given your faith to the Grimalkin. How amusing. I do my best to give him an eye-level stare. Not the easiest thing to do when your opponent has no visible eyes. Eventually, he finishes laughing. So you are a man who lives by what he believes. Your determination is refreshing. But if you wish to retrieve me, you must do so by force. I am the White Void. I am the Cold Steel. I am the Just Sword. With blade in hand, shall I reap the sins of this world and cleanse it in the fires of destruction? I am Hakuman. The end has come. <laughs> then prove to me my beliefs are wrong. You better not be a big to fight this time. The wheel of fate is turning. Rebel, one. You dodge? Well, perhaps I have misjudged you and your so-called belief. He is still a bitch to fight. I damaged him quite a bit. His movements, movements are noticeably slower. This is by chance. I pull out my communicator. Can you hear me, Kokonoi? The devices are in place. Get ready to warp the target. Roger! Get away from Hawkman so you don't get dragged in yourself, meathead! As the arse we prepared begins to ride itself out in the air, I can see Hakuman starting to fade. Let me ask you one thing. What? Do you really think that master of yours, the Grimalkin, deserves your faith? That's none of your concern. Huh. I seem to have struck a nerve. Until we meet again. I can't see his face, even if he even has one. But I feel Hawkman grins at me before he disappears, along with the arse. Huh? His last words are still hanging in the air when I detect a dangerous presence behind me. More specifically, the presence of an Azor Grimoire. I turn around to see it, the sneer of a white-haired young man. So, you're Ragnar the Blood Edge, huh? So what if I am? What are you gonna do about it, Sector 7's Red Devil? Nothing. Huh. So you're not here for a fight. Capturing you is only secondary. And I'm afraid I don't have enough energy remaining to complete that task. Is that right? Well, I didn't want to get dragged into anything complicated either. Thanks for saving me the trouble. Don't let me get in your way. Well, thanks for being so considerate. <laughs> I just carry out my missions as I am told. Nothing more, nothing less. So there's no need to thank me. 
I step into the elevator and pull out my uh, communicator. This is Tager. My mission's complete. Now returning to base. Forget about the damn reports. Just get your ass back here. Teleportation went well enough, but that damn Hawkman really gets on my nerves. I don't want... I don't want to go back to Coconut. Hey, eh, eh, Hawkman? I know how you feel. Roger that. I'll return as fast as I can. Oh, Tager. What is it? Nothing. I was just remembering something. Back when I picked you up. <laughs> What's gotten into you? Reminiscing about the past? Yeah, I am. Something wrong with that? I found her somewhat... a panicked tone of voice, strangely cute. She's acting like a teenage girl. Hardly. It just didn't seem like something you would do. Out of character, huh? Yeah, well, now that you mention it, I guess I am pretty busy these days. Not a lot of time for memory lane. Too busy to remember if those days went by fast or slow. Okay, now you've got me worried. You're being way too sentimental. Or are you just relieved Hockerman's been recovered? It takes her a moment to respond. Almost like she's hesitant. Relieved? No. I just hate how powerless I am. By the way, Tager... Do you still need something? Oh, it's not that. It's just... Thanks for everything you've done for me. I'm sorry. I didn't catch that. The Kokonoe I know would never bother to thank me for my trouble. Perhaps my aur auroral equipment malfunctioning. That the only other explanation I can think of is that I'm having auditory hallucinations. I have been put under a lot of stress. I said thanks for everything you've done for me. Especially for all the stuff you've done on this particular mission. What, you think it's strange for me to say thanks? I wouldn't say strange. But I believe that was the first time you've ever thanked me. So I was just surprised. Really? Huh. Thought I mentioned it before. The side is giving patience. I guess my reception is getting worse. The connection is breaking up. I'll hear the rest when I return to base. All right. I can't wait to see you again. S see me again? That seems like a strange thing to say. Unless... I'm sorry, Tager. First gratitude, now an apology? If I'm not malfunctioning, then, then there must be something wrong with Kokonoe. Really? Is something wrong with you, Kokonoe? You're acting awfully strange today. Those words I was about to utter along with everything else on the face of this rotten world, disintegrated in a few moments. I'm sorry, Tager. For a second, I thought I just heard Kokonoe's voice again. There's no need to worry. I'm sure you'll find me once again. I, too, look forward to that day. Tiger Story's Blind Warrior End Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll do a bite to you next. Bye.